Hello booktube and welcome to another weekly reading vlog. Well, I'm still working on these three books, but uh, first I have a little book haul to report. A, a book haul of one. Uh, on this channel we call those book hauls, even if it's just one book. Uh, this showed up at the book exchange at my work, at the school that I work at. Uh, and it's a narrative history. Uh, in fact, that it says, a marvelous book in the best tradition of narrative history from the Daily Telegraph. And it's on the cover, so it must be true. Uh, the book is called Soldier Sahibs, The Men Who Made the Northwest Frontier by Charles Allen. Uh, so it, it looks like this is about the, the British in India and uh, kind of narrative history. I hate to say this, but with the slow pace of my reading, uh, I am accumulating a lot of books now that realistically I'm probably never going to get around to reading, and this may well be one of them. But uh, in Vietnam, where I'm currently living and working, it's hard to find good history books uh, in English. Um, you, you know, the local bookstores here have a lot of young adult stuff, they've got a lot of fiction, but, but a good history book is hard to find. It looks like this book was was these books, uh, which uh, I'm actually familiar with. That's in Phnom Penh in Cambodia. Somebody must have bought it over there and brought it across. I, I don't know who at my work. Um, but yeah, I, I I like history. I don't read as much of it as I, I wish I did if, if, if I had more time or, or more power of concentration. But every, every now and again, I, I like a good narrative history. So I thought if, if, I let, if I let this one, if I pass this one up, if I let somebody else take it, then who knows how, how long it'll be before I have an opportunity to snag a good history book again. Actually, as the words are coming out of my mouth, I realize that's not true. I've got, I've got there are plenty of opportunities to find history books. My, my school library has tons of history books that I haven't read. Uh, but for for whatever reason, I, I thought I would snag this one. Uh, so it, it's on the shelves now, and we'll see if I ever get around to it. And anyways, uh, back to the reading for this week here. Um, <clears throat> so this, this past week, uh, from Monday to Friday, I was actually traveling. And uh, if, if you've been keeping your eye on this channel, uh, you may have noticed I posted a number of travel videos from my trip to Nha Trang, a, a beach town in central Vietnam. And I'll, I'll, if you missed them, I'll link to them in the, in the description down below. Uh, I neglected to mention that last week when I was doing the, the weekly reading vlog, just because I, I figure it's always good sense not to announce your traveling beforehand, right? You, you, just, just in case that there's some sort of uh, uh, thieves who are watching this channel and, and just waiting for me to go on a trip. Uh, even though we, we do actually live in an apartment complex which has security, and even though my sister-in-law was still staying in the apartment. Still, it, it, it just never hurts to be careful about these things. So, uh, obviously when you're traveling, you want to travel light. So these two books I didn't bring with me, and I just brought Journey to the West with me. And I was thinking, uh, even though I was only bringing one book with me, because this was the only book I was taking when I was traveling, I was thinking, I'm going to get loads of progress done on this one book, which did not happen at all. Um, well, I, I was traveling with kids. I've, I've got one uh, four-year-old, one one-year-old, uh, and they just required just about constant attention. Uh, there, there was a, one time when they were sleeping uh, in, in one of the lobbies, and I managed to read a, a good chunk of this book then. But other than that, uh, yeah, how much did I get read? Uh, I was on page... 1,258 last time, I'm up to page 1,336, so uh, I, what, what is that, about 80 pages, I guess, uh, this week, uh, so, so not, that's, that's not a bad week for me, 
Um, but yeah, it, it, it wasn't it wasn't like it used to be before kids, where you would just get loads of reading done in the airport and on the airplane and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I I got some reading done for this book, uh, and very very little with the two other books. So may, maybe I'll just deal with the two other books first. Um, so how to teach listening? I I only got a few pages read of, of this, and, and again this. Is, mostly because I was traveling and did not take this book with me. So I'm on chapter seven, preparation and planning. Uh, he's talking in this book about how to get uh, other listening materials aside from the textbook, like um, uh, film and TV, radio, songs. Um, this, this is the part of the book where it's really dated because it, it's still kind of very old school and how it's assuming people are accessing this stuff. Uh, to be fair, he realizes the book is going to be dated. So he, he, he says here the internet may well catch up soon. And, and other parts of the book he talks about how the internet is going to change things very in the near future. This book was published in 2008. So, you know, you, you, you could see that the internet was, was going to be changing things. Um, but, um, actually, in 2008, the internet w was really coming of age by that time, wasn't it? Um, but I guess, yeah, YouTube, YouTube was still in its infancy at that point. There, there wasn't the, the huge archive of material there is on, on YouTube nowadays, but in 2008. And maybe you figure, the, uh, yeah, actually, we, sorry. Looks like this book has gone through a couple different editions. Um, but it, at any rate, uh, you, you, you would maybe even figure that something published in 2008 was written during 2007 or 2006. Um, but yeah, he, he talks about storing the material with banks of cassettes, videos, and CDs. Whereas nowadays you would just keep all the material on Google Drive or on YouTube. Um, so a, a little bit dated here, but not his fault. Uh, and uh, he, he talks about listening for young learners. I don't know. Um, I, I, I haven't really gotten that much useful, useful stuff out of this week's reading, but I only read a handful of pages. For the <coughs> comic book, the Marvel Horror Lives Again. I have, uh, it's organized by character. So I finished off now all the Blade stories. Uh, so the Blade stories finishes off in this book at uh, page 136. And I'm now on to the Windigo stories, which I, I never knew about Windigo before. Um, yeah, I, I don't know a lot about um, Marvel characters, really. Uh, grew up more of a DC fan. But yeah, so this is, uh, this is of course, the Hulk. Uh, it makes an appearance in the Hulk comics. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a little bit... The, some of these Hulk stories are a little bit predictable. The Hulk is a character I really like in the abstract. I like the angst of uh, Bruce Banner uh, as kind of the loner. But the actual stories can be a little bit of a slog to just get through. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm at the... That's where I'm at in this book now. And then uh, Journey to the West, which is uh, just going on forever and ever and ever. But in spite of that, I, I, I do really enjoy the imagination in this. So I, I think when I left off this last week, the monk had been captured by a she-devil. And the monkey and pig had been, had been fighting the she-devil to try and free the monk. Um, and they had gotten, the, the, the she-devil had, had a, a stinger, which she used to sting the monkey uh, and then later the pig with, with some sort of poison. Uh, and they, 
they go to Guanyin, the Bodhi, the female Buddha, the uh, Bodhisattva, to get advice. Um, and she reveals that uh, the the she devil was was a scorpion, who had uh, studied with Buddha, cultivated the way, as they called in this book, and and um, obtained the powers that way. Um, and at one point, one of the bodhisattvas had attempted to move her away, uh, not realizing what she was, and, and she had uh, stung them and then had run off and had been the she devil ever since. So uh, with that information, the monkey is directed to go get the leader of the stars, uh, the, the, the leader of the Pleiades, I think is what they call them. Uh, so monkey goes up to heaven and he, he gets them uh, and he comes down and he's able to, uh, he turns into a rooster and he crows and he's able to kill the, the scorpion uh, she-devil uh, instantly. Um, and then the, the monk is freed. Uh, so that, yeah, that was interesting. Um, then they go off to the next adventure, the, the next little episode. The next little episode, they're traveling across the mountain. They meet some bandits who try and rob them. Uh, and after uh, a, a bit of back and forth, Monkey ends up killing two of them. And, and the, the monk is really upset because he, he's told Monkey that, you know, killing demons is one thing, but, but humans are redeemable. So you're not supposed to kill humans. That they, they can still be they can still be saved, or, or they can still be, there's still good in them. Uh, and then they go and stay at, um, you know, because they're traveling monks, they have to, to beg for their lodging every night. They, they stay at an, uh, a house with an old couple who reveal to them that their, unfortunately, their son is one of the bandits, um, which, which is a great shame of the family. Uh, and then the son comes to demand food from them the next day with the bandit gang. And when they discover that uh, the monkey and the pig and the, the monk are all staying there, they say, oh great, these are our enemies. Now's our chance to get them. Uh, so the old couple uh, helps them escape through the back door. The bandits chase them. Uh, and then the monkey turns to fight them and he kills a bunch of them, in including the, the, son, uh, the son of the old couple. Uh, and is quite proud of himself, but the monk is, again, uh, furious about it and dismisses Monkey from his service. Which is a plot point that's repeated in this book. I, I've, I've mentioned that this book can be a bit repetitive sometimes, uh, both in the, in the broad sense of there's always a new demon to fight in uh, every um, episode, but also sometimes in a specific sense where specific plot points get repeated. This is a specific plot point that got repeated. The, the monk has already dismissed Monkey from his service one time before. Although to give credit where it's due in this book, they do acknowledge it. So that they, the characters do kind of remember that this is the second time that the monk has dismissed Monkey. So Monkey goes to Guainan, the, the female Buddha, the Bodhisattva, to complain about it. Um, Meanwhile, there's an imposter monkey who uh, attacks um, the monk and, and steals his baggage with his, uh, his, his passports and everything and runs off. And Friar Sand, who, who's uh, one of the, the three disciples uh, of the monk, there's the, the monkey, the pig, and Friar Sand, uh, goes off to the... the um, what are, they, what are they called? Like the, the island where the monkey lives. They call it like the, the, the fruit and flower island or the mountain island or something. Um, where he sees monkey, uh, although he doesn't realize it's actually an imposter. Uh, and monkey is planning to make the trip to the west by himself to get the, the scriptures and get all the glory for himself. And he's uh, assembled a whole group of imposters who are going to impersonate the monk uh, and the pig and Friar Sand. Friar Sand kills the imposter who's uh, impersonating him, and it turns out to be a monkey spirit. So some of these monkeys, I guess, are, are good at transformations. Um, 
So he goes to complain to Guanyin. Um, and then uh, Guanyin says, well, it couldn't be Monkey because Monkey's been here with me the whole time. Uh, and then Monkey goes with Friar Sand to sort it out. And at that point, Monkey meets his imposter. And Monkey and his imposter have this huge fight which goes all over the cosmos. Uh, they're, they're, and nobody can tell which is the imposter and which is not. So they, they're, they're fighting, and as they're fighting, they uh, go to the, the Guainan, the Bodhisattva. They go up to heaven with the heavenly emperor. They go down into the underworld. And it's, it's described that while they're going to all these places, they're fighting with each other the whole time. So they're, they're, they're you know, you, you imagine these cartoons, right, where there's this uh, fight and, and it's like a, a cloud of dust, which is just traveling around, um, going up to heaven, down to the underworld, to all these places. Um, eventually, though, they end up by the Buddha. And the, the, the Buddha uh, is able to tell them apart. Um, and the, the Buddha teaches uh, Guinan um, about the different kind of apes. And the one impersonating monkey is, what is it? A, sorry, one minute. The six-eared Makui, Makui. Uh, so what, what, once uh, Buddha reveals this, uh, then the the six eared maki um, gets captured, uh, and monkey actually kills him with his cudgel. Um, yeah, it says the great sage could not restrain himself, swinging his iron cudgel, he killed the demon with a single blow to the head, and that is why the species is now extinct. So there are no more six eared maquis in the world. Um, Buddha says, this is terrible, this is terrible. But the monkey said, well, you shouldn't feel, feel sorry for him. Uh, according to the law, he should get his head cut off for wounding in the course of theft and daylight robbery. Um, so then uh, Buddha, monkey pleads with the Buddha to make uh, the monk accept him again. And Buddha orders the monk to uh, accept the monkey back into his service. Uh, and then... That is the end of chapter 58. And then from chapter 59, it looks like a, a new episode in the story. So that's where I am now at page 1,336. So I'm uh, making slow progress on this book. It, it does have to be said, but, but continuing to enjoy it. There's so much imagination in it uh, that, that you, you can't help but enjoy these stories.